Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So today I thought I would talk about durability and give you the real truth on the durability of HD0 in my experience. Now you've seen a lot of crashes from me, you've seen where I fly, you've seen how I fly, you've seen countless crashes, like I said, just crash after crash after crash, and not gentle crashes, mind you, hard crashes. Um, and there's always been a lot of talk about durability and that it's not nearly as durable as X, Y, or Z. So I'm going to give you the low down, nitty gritty, the truth about HD0 durability in my experience. So let's just get right into it. Let me give you the numbers. So in my flying, I've been flying HD0 since August of last year. That's seven months now. So August, September, October, November, December, January, February, seven months. So in that time, what has been the casualties of my flying? Am I flying casualty wise, aside from motors um, and other electronics, HD0 only, the only thing that I broke VTX wise is the very first VTX that I had. And this was the one given to me by my buddy John. This, and this one was an original one. He'd had it for a while. Um, but never used it. This is a uh, the original original one, the 2S to 4S version um, that came with like the little extra um, regulator thing. If you were running more than 4S, you had to use the regulator. So, which I never did since I was running 4S. So this this right here, this thing went, and. It still gets power, the little red light comes on, but the blue light never comes on when you plug in the camera or anything, so it just, I don't know what's wrong with it. Something's wrong with it inside, I don't know exactly what. If there's somebody out there that wants this, and you're good with electronics, and you want to tinker, by all means, I will send it to you, just let me know. Um, anyways, yeah, but it's not working. The one other casualty from uh, all my flying, this MIPI cable. Um, so, yeah, I don't know exactly what happened here, but this MIPI cable doesn't, uh, doesn't work. Now, I'm not sure how that happens. Um, anyways, it doesn't work. So, MIPI cable. One MIPI cable, one VTX, through all of the crap that I've put it through. Now, the VTXs that I'm running now are the newer ones that handle up to 6S, and I only run 4S. So, I can't speak to someone running 6S and voltage spikes and all that kind of stuff that happens whenever you crash and maybe that makes it more susceptible to going out i don't know but i run 4s and like i've said before i don't see any reason to run 6s i have absolutely no need for any of the benefits of 6s you know nothing against it if you want to run it by all means but personally i like running my stuff on the more conservative side because with electronics you know um Less is more, many, many times. Um, so, with all of that, what are what are my thoughts on the durability? Now, I don't know anything about like the race VTXs or any of that kind of stuff. I can only speak to running the freestyle VTXs. And again, this is the only one I broke. This was the original 2S to 4S one. The ones that are the newer ones that don't have that limit, um, I've not had any problems with those. They have worked fine. Now, other experiences, the other bad stuff as far as HD0 is concerned in my experience. Now, coming from analog, um, I'm used to crashing, 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 and video not going out unless your battery gets disconnected or unless you actually chop a cable. Um, with digital, it seems that when you take a hard hit sometimes, it just goes out like it'll shut itself down it gets a spike I guess and it shuts itself down and then sometimes it comes back on its own usually you've got a power cycle and then it comes back that's that's probably the the thing that irritates me probably more than anything is that um, really hate that that happens I wish there was a way to fix that I don't know I'm not sure what the causes are so I don't know you know someone who is better with electronics might have a better idea my guess is um, power surges and the electronics shuts down to 
protect itself or whatever you know that's my guess which is you know I mean that's a good thing it protects itself but it would be nice um, if it didn't have to do that if it could just handle those power surges a little better maybe there's a better way of wiring this up to prevent that I know that some people try to use the um, like power from the flight controller you know you've got a um, uh, a BEC and surge protector regulator all that kind of stuff on there and while that sounds good typically it doesn't work out well because these VTXs need a lot of power and even the flight controllers that can provide the power don't always provide the power so again I'm not an electronics expert I don't know the the ins and outs of that I don't know the whys or the why nots but in my experience it's been better to power it directly off of the battery um, works way way better um, I don't fool with smart audio I don't fool with controlling this thing from beta flight I don't need to I can just use tick commands and I get it on the, the goggle display and can change all that stuff so you know for me power direct and run 4s and makes a world difference now um, to help with the shocking and stuff let me show you So to help with the shocking and stuff, let me show you this. So mounting this thing, this is key, I think, to durability. This is basically like a soft mount here. I designed this thing for the frame that I fly here. I'm, I'm flying the Moxie frame. It doesn't have a 30 by 30 mounting point in the back, which is what this Freestyle VTX would mount to. So what I did was I designed a, um, a TPU mount that fits it. And then it's got, it goes over top of the back standoffs, and then I just use a piece of double-sided tape up under this here to hold this little mount in place. And then I use a piece of double-sided tape inside of it to hold the VTX in place. And then I also have these little um, posts in my mount here that are part of the 3D print that kind of slides over. And then they've got, you know, a little flex and stuff in there. So it can kind of move around a little bit. It's got some, some give. And that, I think, has probably been key to the longevity of these VTXs because this thing has taken all the, uh, the force of it and the VTX isn't getting, you know, a real hard jar from the frame, you know, direct. So I think that's key. And I think the people that probably have the problem are probably hard mounting it. Um, something that would be nice um, in the future, maybe, Carl, if you're wanting to tweak the design of this a little bit. I mean, of course, um, changing the location of the plug would be great, but if you didn't want to do that and you just wanted to do one other change, it would be great to kind of make these holes a little bigger and be able to put some rubber inserts in there. So for the people that want to mount them on um, a hard mount, they can have some rubber um, inserts into the holes there and then mount it on a 30 by 30, and that would give them the ability to mount it and keep it in place, not have to have a bunch of double side tape, not have to have a bunch of specialized mounts, um, and get the durability with some shock absorbing there. Um, but the other thing that would really help would be to not have the cable on the side. So speaking of that, that's part of what I did with this mount here. So on this mount, you'll notice I've got this little cover here. So this keeps the plug goes out and the wire stay down up under that. And hopefully this is showing up on camera stay up under that and they get right in there and that keeps the cables from getting jerked on keeps them from getting pulled on protects them you know um, keeps them out of the way of the props and everything you know in hard crashes so that's been that's been key um, the way this camera mounts on the front here it's got these little TPU mounts here because of the way this moxie is designed that protects that camera from a lot of jarring um, and that really helps so those you know those things really make a big difference in in the durability I think so that's been my experience with durability the ins and the outs um, like I said overall I've been really 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 happy with the results of this thing I've been really happy with the range on it um, as you saw in a previous video I'm running 25 milliwatts now for the longest time I ran you know full power on it and Honestly, I didn't get all that much better results from where I'm flying.
But again, I'm not flying out really super far. Now when I fly farther, I will up the power. Um, or if I'm flying with someone else, I will up the power to match whatever they're, they're outputting, or at least as close as I can get to matching what they're outputting to keep us from having interference. Um, but just when I'm flying by myself, in the places that I fly typically, I'm flying 25 milliwatts. I think that helps with longevity, but I've only been doing that now the last uh, last few weeks, maybe the last month or so. Um, so, but that helps longevity, I think, um, in the grand scheme of things, because it doesn't get as hot. Um, what else? Pros cons. I mean, you know, performance wise, image wise looks good. Um, penetration has been fine for me, um, and I'm running the the 720p on the VTX. On the freestyle VTX, um, and it's been been sufficient for the places that I fly. Again, I don't fly these huge bandos where you're going behind 50 walls or whatever. Um, that's just not where I fly. Now, if you are flying those, you probably need better antennas and maybe some more power. Definitely better antennas um, is key. So yeah, but durability, durability has been good. You know, mount this thing in here in the proper way. I'm going to fly a little bit and leave you guys with a little flying and um, then we'll we'll finish it up. I probably ramble way too much. Probably need to cut that intro down a bit, don't I? Do I ramble too much in my videos? I think I ramble too much in my videos. Kind of reminds me of the old steel videos, man. He used to ramble and ramble and ramble. <laughs> oh, I'm bad about that. I don't really have a script or a plan. Kind of speaking off the cuff. So I definitely ramble a lot. I'm gonna fly a little bit. Let's see if I can practice some of my flow suggestions here a little bit and see if I can make a more flowy video here. And uh, like I said, if, uh, if you disagree with me on any of my stuff that I said or if I'm uh, rambling too much, you know, let me know. Um, I'm always open to, to new ideas, new suggestions, and people pointing out when I'm wrong, even if I'm not wrong. But most of the time I probably am, so you can point it out. Just a little playing around here with this thing. If I hit the roof there. Oh, I did hit something there. I think I knocked a... Probably didn't knock my prop loose. I think I did. And I didn't bring my tool with me today. That'll probably be the case. Nope. I didn't. Ha ha! Good deal. Just sound like I did. Oh, yeah, I did. Oh, well. Let's try to... <laughs> Y'all gonna hear that thing squeal a little bit. So if the thing's kind of funky, it's because I'm flying with a loose prop. Ah, I better land this thing. Maybe I can hand tighten it a little bit. <laughs> oh. Ah. Which one's loose? This one. Oh yeah, she's pretty loose. I'm pretty warm from that. All right, we'll finish that out though. I think I can finish it out with just some little light stuff, maybe. Oh. All right. So, yeah. Getting better at this. Uh... Oh, so I did that. <laughs> All right, we'll call it that.
I heard the, uh, the prop squeal when I did that. It was only barely hand tightened there. And my phones are ringing. So we'll call it that. You guys have a good one.